Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric This Finger Show. We're talking about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of The Enemy Within. A great season finale. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break this down. Obviously, it's that continuation of like, you kind of know where Erica is loyal to lie, but at the same time, she still does that thing of like, you're still not 100% sure who she's really playing. You kind of feel like, oh, she's playing tall, obviously, but then you're kind of like, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, obviously, like, there's a whole situation. The Will's like, okay, we're going to handle this domestic situation first. Then you, me, we're going to get in a plane to Cuba. And then we're going to handle Tall ourselves. I'm like, yo, that's pretty dope. But Erica's, like, just send me by myself. And, like, Will doesn't 100% trust her. Obviously, they end up, like, going to a facility. Like, okay, so this is where, you know... This is where Tall is going to set up everything for his attack. So let's go here as a preemptive strike. Sadly, it turns out it's a trap. It's actually interesting. I mean, I think luckily because Erica has been in contact with Tall, she overheard that conversation over and over again in her head. And it's like Tall was like, oh, I no longer need your help with the FBI. That basically he was kind of taking care of it himself. And she was able to warn the team in time for um, that it was a trap. Luckily, you know, Brad got a little banged up and some of uh, like four other people on the team got hurt. But luckily, everyone kind of walked away from it, okay? Because of Erica. I mean, granted, she had to knock out, like, some cops, FBI agents or whatever that were transporting her back to her cell or whatever, or just cops in general t taking her back to her cell, so there's that, but, you know, you know, Kate, at the end of the day, was kind of very thankful, because it's like, oh, thank you, because of you, Keaton, and the others are still alive and everything, so... That's one side of things where, like, okay, she obviously cares about this team and everything, but for her, it's like, oh, I need you still alive because it's like, oh, yeah, when you actually think about it, it's like, well, the rest of the team wouldn't be all for her kind of going off on Cuba, going to Cuba alone, so she needs Keaton because she's worked the biggest, like, she's built the biggest relationship with him. He's kind of gotten to the point where he trusts her because he knows the reason why she's doing all this, that she was framed by Tall and everything, that her hands were forced, so he understands her a little bit more than anyone else on the team, so there's that whole situation, but I I was actually kind of surprised when the time came. She actually told me, it's like, oh, yeah, I've actually been operating with him the entire time. To be fair, she did leave out a detail that later on comes up. I'm like, did she tell him in between and we just didn't know it? Or it's like, no, she just left out that whole Shigori detail. Like, obviously, I'm going to talk about that later on. But I was like, it is kind of interesting that you will leave out a detail. But because he, you know, he's thinking about Cabrera being like, don't trust her. Daniel saying, don't trust her. So it's like these different sides of him kind of at war because he knows who she is and he believes he can trust her because it's like she wants to stop tall just as as much as I do. She's proven her loyalty time and time again. She's helped save my life time and time again. So it's like I owe her this much. So he's willing to give her the benefit of doubt. Especially because she's like, if things go wrong, I need you to take care of Hannah for me. And he's like, I'll, you know, look after them, you know, when the time needs be. And it turns out, like, obviously, like, it's kind of interesting, like, seeing her kind of get to Cuba and everything, tall, and her meeting face-to-face. -face. Yes, because when you actually think about how powerful that scene is, too, it's like, that's her first time meeting face-to-face -face since he was in her home three years ago. So, you know, and to be face-to-face -face out there this time. I didn't even think about that either, like, when they first talked, too. That was our first time hearing his voice in the three years. Now you're in front of the man who basically destroyed your entire life, kind of threatened your daughter, so there's that. Obviously, Keaton's, you know, you know, in the States, still helping with the whole um, situation, the attack. It's like, Daniel, he ends up bringing Daniel back into the fold because it's like, I can't do this without you. And it's kind of interesting, too, because, like, Daniel is the one to kind of figure things out. I won't lie to you. There was a part of me that was a little suspicious. I'm like, Daniel just happens to figure that out. I'm like, oh, Daniel's very good at his job. But part of me is like, you don't think it's going to be a twist like he's behind all of this or not? Because it's like, oh, yeah, how it's like, how did, um you know, Tall know about the fact is the FBI was going to that specific area? How did, like, you know, set that place up for a trap? To be fair, Tall's very good at what he does. So he probably set a lot of stuff in motion ahead of time. Like, he gave Bacchus enough information that he knew probably on the off chance that he would get captured. Like, there's probably, like, stuff like that um, set in motion where it's like, oh, if you're captured that someone might use something, you know, some information. Like, he probably misinformed some people just on the off chance they do get captured that way. Because he already has it orchestrated so no one knows the entire plan. Anyway, people know fractions and it turns out those fractions of a plan are all decoys to begin with. Like the Union Station thing was kind of a lie and anything until Bacchus was kind of a lie. But now we take what we already learned from him previously about like, oh, you're doing all this because the CIA, you blame them for your brother. It's kind of interesting because we never find out specifically who was in charge at that time that led to the situation to his brother 
playing out the way it does. Because obviously we know he's going after Bell for a specific reason. And part of me was wondering, is it supposed to be like Bell was, you know, the main one in charge at the time? But it's like, no, Bell was the one who recruited him. I figured that was more so it. Like, I thought she was maybe lying about her past or something. It's like, no, she was the one that recruited him most likely. So that's why he harbors such ill feelings towards her. So that's why going after her was so personal for him. But, you know... The FBI, luckily, they did pick the right spot, you know, going I mean, to be going back to what I was saying earlier, going past all the Daniel stuff, like Daniel was right, and they luckily showed up in time to help the CIA because it was like a ceremony and stuff like that. Turns into a big gunfight. Luckily, I mean, there might have been some agents that got hurt, but luckily no one actually died under that circumstance, at least that we know of. So the attack didn't go as Tall had planned. Um, I, I think it is, you know... So I know there's little things here and there I should also note too. Like obviously when Brad got a little banged up from the explosion and stuff like that, Jackie Gunn running over to him. It's kind of obviously because it's like he was there when she got hurt. And obviously, like like I said, it's so interesting because it's not like they're pushing that. They're just kind of little hints and being like obviously they care about each other. Either like they care about each other like nothing's ever happened between them and something potentially could in the future. But maybe because they're co-workers, they're reluctant to let that happen. Or maybe something did happen between them in the past and they're super reluctant to let it happen again. I don't know. Maybe there's more to that story. Because I don't really remember them talking much about like their past 100% like when Jackie first pops up in the story. But nevertheless, it's... um. It was just kind of an interesting little thing, but uh, when it's all said and done, like, um, going after those last few guys during the whole situation and having, you know, Bragg fight that dude, and it looked like it was going to go bad until Keaton showed up, and then, like, Bragg put the dude down, then, you know, Keaton going after Shigorin, because that's personal, and, like, Shigorin saying that line of, like, beg for your life like she did. Luckily, Daniel shows up, but Keaton's the one that gets to kill him by like I think just either stabbing his throat or slitting his throat either way he it was up close and personal and a hard cut to Keaton coming to Cuba it's kind of interesting too because we kind of get a like like I said that interesting aspect of like you know figuring everything out you know because you know for Tall he's like the attack obviously in the U.S. was a personal attack and everything he's doing in Cuba is a plan for the future and you know he leaves it up to Erica to kind of figure out his plan and it's like Sierra Maestra your plan is to attack there because he needs to get all his operatives because some of his operatives are there so it's like well no not some because all of them are his operatives in some shape or form I forgot that's like the whole point Sierra Maestra is supposed to be a facility made of entirely of his um operatives but the whole situation is that basically he didn't like the way the world was kind of run so basically he's causing all these attacks because he wants to destabilize the world and he wants to swoop in with an army of his own to have the power to kind of reshape the world the way he sees fit because it's like you know the way different governments kind of handle things i think it's almost like if i had to compare it to anything kind of like blind spot how um hank crawford wanted kind of an army to kind of like shift the way the world works kind of an army to kind of rule the world to come to keep balance he kind of wants to be that new balance and kind of tip the world in scales of like this is my beliefs this is where i stand on things so this is how the world is going to be reflected so it's kind of interesting to kind of see that that's his point of view because you would think it is just 100 percent destruction but there is you know there is no randomness to what he does like obviously it's all an orchestrated plan and you kind of see his vision like like it's kind of a nerdy thing to kind of make a comparison to but it's almost like some Thanos level thing of like you see a greater vision that no one's able to see like you believe that things kind of need to be handled in this certain way but the rest of the world won't believe it so it's like no matter how much bloodshed you have to accomplish you're going to do this you're going to shape the world you see fit you know and you know it's just sad I mean it makes you wonder would he have always gone down this route I'm sure like because you know everything with the CIA once again is personal everything going forward is just his own future but it's like it would it, it, would he be on the same path if he hadn't lost his brother? So I'd assume not. But now Erica's part of his plan and everything. Um, Keaton shows up. They end up stopping one of his groups. But when the time came, it's like, okay, so now you have to prove your loyalty because she ends up dropping the bomb on Keaton of like, oh yeah, Shigori, I'm the reason why he got away. I knew that was so personal to you, but to get in Tall's good graces, I helped him by helping Shigori get away. So obviously you can tell that it hits Keaton pretty hard, but it's also like, you know, Tall 100% believes Erica's on his side. It's like the fact of the matter is, um, it's like, oh yeah, she's been lying to you the entire time because it's like, because she never outright told him, I, I guess... She eventually ended up telling Tall because, like, the way she 
was explaining it at all, it seemed like she was still vague. It's still kind of like, oh, oh, I used his weakness and his empathy to kind of, you know, use him as an asset and stuff like that. But it's like, I, I didn't remember her specifically saying, like, oh, I used the whole thing of telling him the truth about you and me. Like, I didn't know she had really broken that down, but he he tells that to kind of use it against Keaton because it's kind of like his one last middle finger to Keaton. Like, oh, I've took all this from you, and now it's like this person you kind of trust. Oh, yeah, she's been lying to you, too. Like, it's all going to end here for you. Your grand plan to kind of stop me, to be the one that put me down, it all ends here. Because it's interesting because we also found out why he wanted Erica, too, because now it's like, oh, like, I don't necessarily need you under the same operation I like you know obviously with the FBI and stuff like that I'm, I think for him he still probably thought, thought everything in the states went down he probably hadn't gotten word that things didn't go well so maybe he I, I don't I, I wonder did he know that things had gone south or not I don't think he really had until like Keaton had showed up so but maybe he didn't get word from Chigor and then he knew like things had gone south maybe he thought at the very least a lot of those people would be dead. It's interesting too because for him it's like he he actually wanted Erica's help to track down other CIA operators because it's like you're in part of that world, you know how they operate, what they do, what they think, where they hide because for him it's like I don't want to just kill part of the CIA, I want to completely and utterly erase it. Once again it's the whole thing of like everything that they stand for, the way they kind of bring people in, making promises, using them and leaving them high and dry like they did him and his brother so he wants to destroy them for everything but sadly when it's all said and done it's like it's like erica put a bullet in keaton sparing a life i am assuming when he said that he was referencing himself of like oh you spared my life rather than killing me because there's a whole thing of like oh how did you make it through you know those three years and everything it's like most men who are in that situation end up kind of like they are shells of their former self they become ghosts but how did you survive all that and she's like i did it because I fantasized about my family, but also putting a bullet in you, you know, so they find ourselves here, you know, and when it's all said and done, it's like, okay, she has a choice, like, she has to kill Keaton, she ends up shooting Keaton, and I was like, oh, wow, I still figured, like, okay, there's something here to it, but it's like, oh, Keaton's still alive, she proceeds to kick ass and kill everyone around, even shooting tall as he runs away, but she's telling Keaton, it's like, hey, it's gonna be okay, just keep pressure, and then she runs after tall. And I was curious to see what was going to happen with this whole situation. I was thinking, like, I was thinking, okay, things are definitely not going to be so open and shut here. Like, I figured there was going to be some extenuating stuff, but I was like, okay, is Tall going to throw himself in the water? And it's like, oh, did he get, he got away, but he's not dead type of situation. Or maybe he's dead, but it's like, no, Tall's still alive. I know he's out there type of thing. I don't know. But at the very least, I, I was actually shocked to see things kind of play out the way they did. Tall does inform her, like, oh, yeah, I didn't work alone. She's like, you're lying. It's like, no, you really think I could pull all of this off on my own? It's like, no, someone high-ranking in the intelligence community in the U.S. is like, they helped me because they believed in what my beliefs. They shared them, too. So that's how he was able to kind of stay one step ahead. I would, Because that's why I was wondering, like, is that the reason why he was able to know to set the FBI up the way he did? Like, did he get contact for someone? It's like, oh, they're planning to go after this place. They're building up a team and everything, which is like, okay. But still, it's like. To know that, you know, that's why I still feel like it was that thing of, like, I brought up earlier of, like, oh, he's just kind of got contingency, contingency plan upon contingency plan like that. It, I don't know if that place was set up in a rush or whether it was already set up like that long before they even got it. It's, it's hard to really say in that regard. But uh, it's like, yeah, you spare my life. I'll help you find this person who's operating from the shadows. But for her, Erica, it's like, no, I have no intention of working with you. I thought what was going to happen is that she was going to shoot him and wound him. It's like, you're not going to get off that easy. We're going back. You know, you're going to be locked up. But it's like, why take the chance of leaving someone like him alive, especially considering the fact that someone could still, you know, use that situation to their advantage to, you know, try and bust him out. You know, it's like, oh, he's still alive. He'd still be a martyr and everything potentially. So I guess that's something that would have to be thought about. What's also interesting too, you have to think about too, like there's a whole Mendoza situation too. I'm trying to remember what happened with that. They were still questioning her. She's still locked up and everything. So I wonder what's going to happen knowing that Tall is dead. I mean, I'd assume without him at the forefront, his organization kind of falls, but you never know. Someone else might rise up to kind of take his position. Obviously, they're just unknown partner in all of this, too, so maybe they'll kind of pick up operations. Maybe someone else is going to be the figurehead of the whole thing. Like, they'll still be kind of the person working behind the shadows, but they'll raise up a new tall to take his place with everything. We might see something like that, potentially. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, might as well put Tall down. That's what she's wanted anyway. And I thought it was kind of interesting. I like the one week later, I was like, oh, she's there to see Hannah play volleyball and everything. But it's like, and Keaton's there. And I'm like, oh, apparently it kind of makes sense. But it's like, oh, yeah, she found like they never met back up. She probably probably watched her in the shadows and make sure that Keaton was OK. Or maybe she did. She was just kind of like, hey, it was fine. Like the wound wasn't that bad. And the fact that the matter is I already called for help. So he's good. So she kind of was on her own for a while. I, I wonder did Keaton even send people to go looking for her. He probably knew she'd show up eventually, so there was no point. It's like, how did you sneak back into the States? You act like it's that hard. I do love the situation. They're like, how are you doing? He's like, well, you shot me. And she's like, I did it. Save your life. It's like, come on. Do you know how that really sounds? But it is interesting to hear the conversation. And that's what I brought up before. Of like, it's really hard to say where her loyalties right, lie because her loyalties at the end of the day will always lie with Hannah in the sense that Hannah is her most important that's the most important thing to her in the world. So it's like, even if she had to work with a man like Tall, who would do a lot of terrible stuff, uh, he ruined her entire life, put her in this situation in the first place. If it meant everything working out for her daughter, for Hannah, then she would be willing to make that sacrifice. If I'm going to go to hell for that, if I'm going to be punished for that, I don't care. As long as it's for my daughter, you know? And, uh, you know, because Keaton brings up, it's like, there must be a, some small part of you that was kind of okay with that, you know? And it's sad, too, like, because that's why it always seemed like she could tiptoe, because you, you see that, I think most of her was kind of like, no, I'm going to put down tall, this is all part of the plan, but I think there is a part of her that was kind of like, she likes Keaton's trust, because he's the first person to trust her in a very long time, considering everyone looks at her as this very bad person. I am curious, well, I guess there's no going back on it now, because I was about to say, could this, like, help with her case and everything? Keaton knows the truth about her, but still, like, what would this mean going forward for the team? Would they be more reluctant to trust her? Because it's like, well, you know, would Keaton keep a lot of that, you know, secret, like the whole her shooting him thing, or, you know... Would the team be like, well, she came back, she helped take down Tall in the end, so we're all good in that regard? I don't know. Did Daniel get his position back? I mean, Molinero was kind of hard-pressed in this situation, but if, like, they took down Tall, maybe it's kind of like a, well, you stopped, you know, the attack on the CIA and, you know, some higher-up people. So, at the end of the day, it's like, fine, you win, so probably going to help out with the Daniel thing, but obviously she's still going to be keeping an eye on Keaton, maybe even bringing Daniel back on a team to be that purpose. Like, that's what I thought, like, because obviously Daniel was said no, but we might see a situation where it's like, okay, he's bringing her back, but we still can 100% trust her. But to be fair, it's like, for him, it's like, no matter what happened, Keaton still kind of did, got the job done, you know, so that's probably going to be something interesting to tell you know, Lane's dad, but there's also the thing of, like, there's still the complicated thing of, like, you're still working with the woman that kind of put everything in motion because she gave Lane's name, so... That's a whole complicated thing in itself. But what's also interesting, too, it's like, oh, yeah, is there anything else you're hiding from me? And she doesn't tell him what Tall said. So I guess for her, it's like, that's going to be her secret. Because for her, it's that whole thing of like, well, I don't know if he's telling the truth. I have to find out on my own first, which the moment that truth potentially comes out, that's going to definitely ruin things between her and Keaton. And then there's the whole situation of like, obviously, she's going to be working with them. You know, she's going to be staying in D.C. for a while, obviously being nearby, you know, Hannah probably orchestrate that make that potentially a thing i don't know depends on her ex-husband how he wants to operate things going forward but definitely you know she's going to be orchestrating more stuff i i like that it's still kind of like she still kind of has that cia side of things for herself where it's like oh no matter what happens i'm always still going to operate on my own i guess because i don't know like why even after all of this even when he's kind of trusting you are you still keeping stuff from him i think that this situation is going to make him trust you a little bit less he is going to be on guard of being like i need to be more mindful because you were able yes see, it was all for the good reason you know for the greater good at the end but you still lied and manipulated us you know keeping a cell phone burner and everything to be in contact with tall so there's that but it, it is interesting like aside from that there's no outright like oh this is you know because the villain was never even revealed, so who that person is, you know, I'm curious to see what she do, what kind of cases they potentially could go on in the future. At the time we're recording this, I've been doing a little bit, and it's still unclear whether or not uh, the enemy within is getting renewed or not. It's still kind of in that phase, along with other shows, but um, I'm really hopeful that it does come back for a second season, because I'd love to see, you know, like I said, the dynamic of everything going forward, like what this would all mean for Erica. Like, obviously, Tall was kind of like the only real evidence to prove like everything she did was for Hannah's sake, 
And, you know, will that truth potentially come out in the second season? What would Hannah do? Would, what would her husband do? Would he try to lobby to make it so that everything about her traitorous status gets unturned? I mean, you know, turned over. What about Keaton? Will he try to do that? Will he try to help her out? It depends on a lot of things I would assume, you know? Like I said, there's also the thing of, like, Keaton and his people are under scrutiny. They're, you know, people got an eye on them, so I'm sure that's also something to be considered as well. It's also personal stuff, too. Like, I brought up the whole Jackie and Bragg situation. What's up with that? What about Kate and Will? Like, obviously, she hasn't really acted upon her feelings because it'd be like, uh, that's kind of a little wrong to do that, you know, considering the whole Lane situation. So... Once again, Daniel's status with the team. Is he back? Is he not? Would there be conditions to his return? Well, we'll have to do a lot. I mean, to be fair, like, we don't know what also went down in that week, you know, between Tall's death and, you know, Keaton tracking, you know, Erica down. So we'll ultimately have to wait and see, you know. Like I said, once again, I'm hoping that it comes back for a second season because, you know, obviously, like, the main threat has potentially been taken care of. Obviously, Erica knows otherwise, but I'm curious, you know, without that really being a thing, like, what would, you know, Erica and, you know, Keaton's relationship and dynamic be like, considering the fact is that was the thing that bound him together because him, it was like, he will work with her as long as it meant, oh, I'm going to take down Tall, but now that's kind of been removed. It's still like, you do good work, so we're going to, you know, do a lot of, like, counterintelligence type of stuff, handle cases like that, but it's like, what would their, like, you know, their personal dynamic be, you know, after this experience? Once again, will he trust her more? Will he trust her less? Will he always have a tinge a smidge amount of distrust of her just because of the way she operated, knowing that if it meant for her daughter's sake, she could easily sway, but also understanding that side of her. I'm, I'm curious to see what that could all mean going forward if we get a second season. I'd also love to see, like, what the new cases would be like. Would she have, like, a lot more of a hands-on approach, especially because she's kind of been shown to, like, hey, when we kind of let her go, like, obviously we keep her on a leash, but, like, if we kind of let things kind of play out a little bit, she can be useful. So what would her dynamic be with the team? Like I said, we'll have to wait and see. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.